Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters. It is Brother Solis with another episode of Coffee and the Truth. And again, I got my brothers that I just discovered. Brother Tanner. What's up? And Brother Elliot. Hello. Two young guys that have been rolling with me since 1957. <laughs> no, my road dogs, my young men, young men in my youth group that we just decided to start a podcast for young people and to talk about problems. And so we want to dive into a series. And the series that we're going to call this is Honey Dip Lies. Now, it's not just one thing. There's a couple of them. And the first lie that we want to talk about is I'm not enough. Now, often in our Christian walk, you will hear the word humble, right? Humble, humble. However, I might say it both ways. So excuse me, all right? But I believe that often, in fact, too many times, we confused being humble, and having low self-esteem. Would y'all agree? Mm -hmm. So a humble person is not somebody that's prideful, that would consider somebody else, but at the same time, they know that they're more than able to accomplish something. While a person with low self-esteem is going to hope that the ball is going to be passed by them and they will not get picked per se because they're not confident that they can handle the ball being in their hand. So basically if it's a picking to play basketball and we're picking teams, they're hoping they won't get picked because they're not confident in themselves while a humble person it's not going to be walking around saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I can ball, I can ball. You know, I can do this. You know, I'll, I'll beat anybody. You know, a humble person is uh, going to allow the numbers to talk. And so I'm not enough is something that I see that a lot of us deal with. It has a lot to do with our backgrounds. It has a lot, a lot to do with who has been encouraging us in our life. And the words that we allow to affect us because words do have power. I know the nursery rhyme, whatever we want to call it, the sticks and stones may never break my bones, well, may break, break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And we already taught as a young person, as a kid, to believe the lie of the devil right there. You know what I mean? Because that's what it is. I mean... You ever had somebody hurt you by the words? Yes. You, Elliot? Oh, yeah. No, it, it happens. It happens. And so we often allow some words that were said to us by people that we love, people that we are associating with, or just some trolls nowadays, you know what I mean? And it affects us. As much as we say that it doesn't, we can tell that it's affecting us because we often bring it up, right? If I'm over a sickness, I'm most likely not going to be coughing still, right? Not running fever. Why? Because I'm well, I'm healed. But if I'm not, I'm still going to have symptoms of the sickness right or wrong. Right. And so we often... Say that, oh, all is well, but you can hear the the symptoms of that sickness and that hurt or whatever the case may be because of somebody's words. And so what a honey dip lie is, is something that has been dipped to seem good, but in reality, it's not. And having low self-esteem at the time may seem that it's good, but ultimately it's not when we see how much setback that it does for us as individuals, especially a person 
who is called by God will never live up to their full potential in God if they have low self-esteem. Now, God does call us to be humble. The reason why he wants us to be humble is because we need to understand that we cannot do it, but he can do it. And the only way for us to do that and know that is to actually be humble. But a low self-esteem person can never get up off the ground. They would never answer the call because they're too afraid of the cost. And not only the cost, they're too afraid that they cannot perform the duty that's been assigned to them. Now, am I crazy or do y'all do y'all see that as a, I can't say, a, 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 I'm not going to say an issue, but do you see that in, in this day and age, in this young group of people in school and your family, whatever the case is, or am I just crazy not just seeing something that nobody else does? Yeah, I actually see it in myself. Okay, so I'm going to open up real quick. Recently, the Lord has put me in a waiting season, or some people call it a dry season, whatever. And, um, you know, he revealed to me things in my childhood and, um, you know, personality traits that he wants me to emit more, you know, flamboyancy and not caring what people think and having unconditional love towards people. And, you know, he revealed these things to me and then he stopped talking. And as soon as he stopped talking, the devil got loud, like very loud this past week. And he kept on telling me the lie that I'm not good enough or that I'm not going to make it or, you know, whenever I sinned or I fell, that I was immediately condemned forever. And I want to share this because I know that if I'm feeling it, that there's someone else feeling it in the church, in the body. And so I want to tell y'all, I know it's kind of, it's kind of out of pocket, but like I feel I need to tell y'all right now, but you're not alone and it's going to be okay because we're going to get out of this season and God is going to help us through it. But yes, I agree. <laughs> Elliot, what, what do you think, brother? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think it's a pretty big um problem with young people um I don't have any experiences with it really but um one like with being a Christian though one thought uh there's other how do I say this there are there's other ways with I'm not enough like but but being a Christian one can be I'm not enough to be used by God and then so it's real easy for um not not always Satan, but our flesh to tell these lies to ourselves. I'll be honest, me and Brother Tanner. If you're gonna be honest, let me be honest too. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I have. I'm a 30 year old man, and I have. I got into church when I I got for real. I got serious with God when I was 24 years old. And so I've been in church six years. And you see things. And if you allow the devil to play with your mind and play with your heart, you're going to see things from his lens. And I can honestly say I did. I'm not here trying to prove that I'm better than you or better than anybody in this world. I'm trying. I'm, what we're trying to do is help you to understand that you ain't bad on this alone because that's one of the big lies that he likes to tell you. It's only you. Shut your mouth. If you open your mouth, they're going to condemn you. But this is a no condemnation zone here. And so one of my big deals was my daddy wasn't in this. My mama wasn't in this. I have nobody to give me a one up. You get what I'm saying? I'm a project kid who's going to church, but I have nobody that laid stepping stones for me to step on. And so you often tell yourself that because of where you came from and because of your background, you would never be able to accomplish. You would never be enough. And I said, we may not tell ourselves those exact words. And let's believe when I was in that season, Brother Tanner, I wasn't telling myself I'm not enough. Then I would have known, hey, Lord, help me. Understand it's not it's not about me, but there's tricks, man. If you're not careful, 
there's tricks and there's traps and there's snares. That's why Paul tells us about the snares, right, of the devil. He's going to slip you up. You're not going to know that you slip. You gonna Man, you probably be down three down, slid three blocks down before the time you realize, man, I done slid. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so you deal with that, man. You deal with that as an individual. You do that, deal with that as a young person. And then you got this brother and you find out about him and his great granddaddy been preaching and his grandpa is a preacher and his daddy's a pastor of a church. And then you see him moving around and you kind of look at yourself and you're all like, man, you can't do that. But I wanted to share experience with somebody that the Lord really um, helped. So when I went to Bible college, of course, most of us had the same grade, you know. No, they weren't handing out candy to us, you know. It wasn't Halloween or just handing out diplomas to us. What it is is that, I mean, really and truly, the things that we did, I mean, people really graded about the same. I mean, we weren't trying to send just anybody to Bible college, you know. So it was kind of obvious that people were going to get around the same grade. So there wasn't no, uh, how do you say valedictorian or what is a fancy word? How do you actually say it? I say it wrong. Valedictorian and salutatorian. There you go. Well, there wasn't one of the V's. All right. (laughs) And so we actually were the biggest group at the time of purpose Institute for us. I don't know as a whole, which is before us. I think we had like 20 something graduates. So, We happened to tell the uh, administrator or whatever, the the head instructor, however you want to view him, if, you know, somebody was going to be Mr. V or Mrs. V, whatever. (laughs) I don't know how to say the word. All right, forgive me, people. (laughs) And, of course, he tells us, well, they really can't because of, you know, most of y'all got the same grade. So it's, you know, unfair to say, hey, this person's a top scorer right here because, there's another person in here with a 98 or whatever the, the case is, you know. So he said he he really did want somebody to speak. It's such a large group, such a large class. I mean, we got recognized as 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 a campus, you know, by Purpose Institute, you know, because of how many graduates we had and things of that nature. So he said he was praying. And guess who the Lord puts on his heart to speak? That nobody from the projects. That's who the Lord chose to speak. And that's whenever I started realizing, man, as long as I stay obedient to God and as long as I stay faithful to God, he's going to open the doors. I'm going to go there because, look, this is what I feel in the Holy Ghost and I'm going to go there. We got to get up out of this mindset like God got a hundred random doors down a hallway and we open the wrong ones. God is not that way. Never will God be that way. There's only one right door. But what the problem is, is that we're walking in that hallway with a sledgehammer, knocking holes in the wall, trying to create doors. All right. And that's what we do. We allow that honey dip lie to seep into our mind. And we start building rooms that God never intended. And we start inhabiting in them. And we start living in them. And we start believing them. Lies are going to come, Tanner and Elliot. Y'all not exempt. I'm not exempt. The pastor that preaches the biggest church had the biggest revival. He ain't exempt from lies. We all got to face the lies of the enemy. But the deal is, when you start believing those lies, that's when they become crucial. That's when we start putting ourselves on the stretcher. We're almost close to death, people. Because when we start believing those things, it paralyzes us. It puts us in wheelchairs. And then we can't do nothing for the Lord. We can't do nothing for nobody. We cannot live up to our true calling. Look, see, I was, 
God had a calling of preaching on my life, and I could never become a preacher if I had that mentality of my background. And you said it yourself. The Lord had to show you some things from when? From my childhood. Your childhood. We're talking 10 years ago? Uh, yeah, around there. 10 years ago. Affecting you today. 10 years ago. Tragedy struck your life. Whatever happened to you. And here you are, 10 years Still living with that. Now just imagine if you try to do another year. And then do another year. And then do another year. So Tanner. And Elliot. If I'm dealing with low self-esteem. What would your words be to me? Give me a second to think on this one. I mean, there's roots. I understand there's roots. And I know we're not paid or not paid. We're not professionals. We're not therapists. We're not counselors. I understand all that. And I'm not... You know, sometimes the roots, you do need some professional to come in and help you dig those roots out or show you the roots and understand what's causing this. I know a guy real well that told me that um, he thanked this counselor. He once sought a counselor because he had some childhood trauma. This is a grown man, had kids already, and he had uh, some trauma in his life, and he says, I thank her. She was like my guardian angel or what well, angel sent from from God. He said, she went all the way back to my childhood. And that's where she found the problem. Now I understand at the time, you, you, you know, I pray that the Lord will help, you know, in that time to help somebody. But if I'm talking to you and I'm in your friend group and I'm on your social media friend list and we go to youth events together and you see me and I... And, you see the calling and you see the hand of God and you see the work that God wants to do through me. But I can't see it through myself. What would your words be to me? What, what would you tell me? Where would you guide me? Um, you're not alone. You know, um, many other, other many people deal with it too. Think about Moses, you know. Was it, um, he had a speech problem, right? Was it what right, it was? Right, right. And um, think about it, though. He probably didn't have confidence in himself to speak. No, he probably didn't have confidence that God will give him words to speak. Right. Uh, I would say that, I'm not trying to be pessimistic here, but that everyone's made from dust, from dust. We were out of, we were made from dust we go back to, right? That's what yeah. it says. Don't compare yourself to people. It's not worth it. Just you follow God. You stay on track with God. You be with God and you let him lead you where he needs, he needs you to be. Don't worry about the person next to you. Don't worry about your mama. Don't worry about your granny. Don't worry, don't worry about no one's opinions. Just... Truly be yourself and envelop in God's love. For a long time, I, what's the word? I tried to earn God's love. And I tried to, oh, okay, so a preacher recently preached on this. He was like, he was basically speaking on the topic of trying to earn God's love through putting a barrier of, oh, I'm holy because I do this. I'm holy because I do this. And then giving yourself a safe, place, a safe place to sin. And that message made me realize that I was trying to earn God's love. God's love is free. When he died on the cross for us and he rose again, his love is free. He gave it to us. And it's time that we don't envelop ourselves in what I'm trying to say. 
and doubts and insecurities, but it's time to let that love overtake and actually tap into that love. Because when we take our problems to him, he will be there. He will listen and he'll be faithful and he'll listen to us. He is a loving God. He is a truthful God. Give it to him and surrender to him. And I just thought about this now, but um, I was joking around earlier and the words I said was, I'm not enough, but Jesus thought I was enough when he died on the cross for me. And that is true because he, he thought I was enough to die for. He thought I was worth dying for. Brother Solis, what do you think about this? Well, first off, I want to say thank you, Brother Sisk, for preaching to me. <laughs> That's what we talking about. Man, that yeah. man preached a wonderful message. Yep. I mean, my goodness. Help me. I need to go to altar that night. I did. I did. Um, but first thing I will tell you who is. That's just straight up off the back, people. Who is? Please show me the person who is enough. Please show me the person that Jesus said, man, you know what? I got to go to the cross for this person, man. This dude's just like, he's so perfect. He's so, man, I just got to die for him. Like heaven's not going to be heaven without this dude. No. Remember, there's a, there's a, 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 a message in the Bible where the disciples wanted to know who's the greatest, right? And Jesus would say, out of all the prophets, there is none greater than John the Baptist. And like you said, what did John the Baptist say whenever... Before he baptized Jesus, there's one who comes who sandals that I am unworthy to loosen. This man said, I can't even, I'm not even worthy to touch this man's sandals. Most of us think that we're worthy enough to touch his hand, his head, his pocket. Yeah, we like that we like to touch daddy's pocket. But he humbled himself because he wanted people to understand. Even though I'm the voice crying in the wilderness, even though I'm the one fulfilling that, that prophecy, God's using me to fulfill that prophecy. I want y'all to understand that there's one who comes after me who is greater than me. But Jesus Christ would say that this man was the greatest prophet of all time, but the greatest prophet would tell me and you that he is not even worthy. Being humble. Not low self-esteem, being humble. So ask yourself, who is? We like to play that comparison game. I love the song by bro uh, Brother Brian T. And it's called Captivity of Comparison. And that's what we're doing. We, we're becoming captives because we're trying to compare ourselves because I can't preach like Brother Tanner and I can't pray like Brother Elliot and I can never do this. And I can great, great, great that you can't do it. But God can, people. You brought a Moses. Great example. What did he try to do to God? Try to bring up his abilities. And God says, I don't need your abilities. God doesn't need my abilities. Here I am trying to tell my tell God, oh, my resume is from the projects. God, do, do, do. he doesn't need my resume. You don't think this dude knew where I came from? Well, sorry, this God, you don't think he knows where I come from? You don't think that he knew me before I was in my mother's womb? And here I am trying to give him my resume like he asked for it. In the, man, he never asked for my resume. He never asked for your resume. What he asked for is your obedience. That's what he asked for. The abilities are going to come. What did he tell Peter? Don't worry about what you're going to say in that day. Because it ain't going to be you speaking anyway. It's going to be the Holy Ghost through you. 
And that's what we got to get. The second thing that we got to get, the first thing is who is. We got to get that in our mind, who is. And then we start realizing. And the second thing is we got to get that confidence. Again, I can't say this enough. We got to get the confidence. I can't, man. I can't. That's great. I can't either. But he can. What did David say? For your name's sake. This is about God's kingdom. And what glory does it, I mean, how much glory does it bring God that the devil would go and tell him, hey, you put a, you put a calling on an ex-homosexual? This mm-hmm. dude ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. And for God to say, watch this. Watch what I'm about to do with this dude. And for the devil to be like, really, you're going to put a calling on a timid young drummer who can't even be confident of getting out the bed. And the God's all like, watch this. God don't need your resume. God don't need my resume. All God asks for is what? Obedience. Because what's greater than sacrifice? Obedience. 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 So when I grab that confidence and that, or that confidence, let's put the confidence. Because then when I start realizing that he can, then it gives me the confidence and goes like, man, no lie. So I'm working out. And man, some fear, fear creeps up in my room. I know what is in my house is just me. My kids are gone. And by, by <laughs> I don't know, I guess you got to catch me. I'm like a chameleon, I guess, because sometimes I can be an introvert and sometimes I can be an extrovert, more on the extroverted side. But I like being around people. I don't like being in a house by myself. I, I, I really don't. And so here I am alone and I'm working out and I'm running. And I just feel where my treadmill is. And my uh, Help me out here, Tanner. My peripheral vision. Peripheral. <laughs> peripheral vision. Thank you. Not only is he one of my youth, but he's my, my grammar. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he helps me out. All right. Come on. Teamwork is a dreamer. But out of my side vision here. <laughs> all right. There's something in my head telling me there's something in your hallway. And it's not God. It's fear. And so I do, I, I do the good Christian thing. You know what I do? What is a good Christian thing? Come on, somebody help me out. Rebuke it. No. Come on. That's the real Christian thing. I mean, I, I did the, gr- the, the good Christian thing. I'm going to keep on running. Hopefully it'll wear off. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to try to pay no mind to it. Right. That's what we do. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of rebuking it. Right. Instead of rebuking some low self-esteem, we're going to sit there and hopefully it'll go away in three years and four years and five years. The next thing you know, we are in a lifestyle and then we got kids. We got great oh, grandkids wow. with low self-esteem. So I did the good Christian thing. But I needed to do the real Christian thing. And so, man, I put that stop button on my treadmill. I said, fear, you don't belong in this house. In the name of Jesus, you got to go. I mean, I was about ready to fight something, like, really, like, for real. Man, I'm standing looking at my hallway. I Man, I'm a, I'm a five-foot-five guy, all right? And I felt like I was Goliath's dad or something, you know? I felt like I was a big, bad Man, I'm sitting there looking in the hallway all pumped up, sweating going, because like I said, I'm running, I'm working out, and I'm just all pumped up, Brother Elliot. Godfidence. But I had to, because the night before, man, I was at Brother Sanchez's out there in El Campo, and man, we had a powerful move of God. I mean, God was just hitting on me. God was just, I mean, my goodness, if God didn't hit you, you didn't want to be hit. You know what I mean? That was just it. But one of the things I gained was that confidence, the confidence and the confidence. And the third, well, the fourth, sorry, because the first one is who is. Second one is confidence. Third is confidence. And the fourth is go. (laughs) The fourth is go. If there's a problem that I had, people, it was I, I needed perfect. So whenever I started this podcast, I was scared because I didn't have the right equipment. I wanted I wanted the, the the good stuff. And this young brother right here actually helped me. Brother Elliot saw like, you know what, man, let's, let's just record it. He popped out his iPhone. 
our first um our first episode of Coffee and the Truth was recorded off this young man's iPhone. That young man helped me. He said, you know what? If God has put something special in your heart and God has put something on you, then do it. Then do it. We can sit here and nitpick ourselves all day. We are our worst critics. Get that down in your head. That probably needs to go up. I don't know. Some, somewhere. We're going to find out where it goes on that list. But you are your worst critic and understand that. But you are going to have to start aligning your worst criticism, if that's even a word. If it's not, I just made it one. And start aligning it with the word of God. And start aligning it with the voice of God. And see if God is saying the same thing that, about you that you are saying of yourself. Now, on that same piece of paper, draw you a line through it and I'll put the voice of the devil and see if the voice that you believe in is the same as the voice of the devil. So who is really telling you that? You know what I'm saying? You cannot let your enemy control you by using you. You need to let God control you by using you. He knew who Peter was. He knew who Paul was, Brother Elliot. He knew that this man was over there beating up on the church and throwing people in jail because he had a zeal for a lie. And you don't think he knew that, Tanner? And he tells the old dirty devil, because the dirty devil, he's all like, look, look, man, my servant Paul, my servant well, Saul, my servant Saul, look at what Saul's doing. And God's are like, oh, you mean Paul? No, I mean Saul. Oh, no, you mean Paul. No, no, I mean Saul. Because, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I believe that the devil don't know all of our plan, all right? God does. So he's sitting there saying Paul, and he's all like, no, 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 Saul. And he's all like, no, you mean Paul. And he says, watch this. Boom. And then he finally gets to read this Paul. Didn't know about this Paul, right? But God would use this man. But God knew who he was. Tanner, you don't think God knows your wounds? He knows them. Elliot, you don't think he knows your wounds? He knows them. He knows his own wounds. He knew what he was wounded by. He knew who he was wounded by. But he allowed those things to build his kingdom. And he's going to allow your wounds that are causing you to have low self-esteem build his kingdom. You get what I'm saying? Place them in his hands. Help him. The reason I say that God can do anything, but one thing he would not do is force himself on you. You're going to have to realize, you know what, I got an issue and I have a problem. And the only way for God to come in is I have to allow him in. Remember, he knocks, right? Mm -hmm. He knocks at the door. He's not part of the SWAT team. He's not going to call your phone and try to get in a negotiator because you got a hostage, which is yourself. And hopefully you allow the hostage of yourself to go. He's going to sit there and simply. And I don't even think he's banging. Because I believe that he's knocking at the right spot in your heart. He's knocking on those wounds. While the devil's using them and throwing them in your face, he's just knocking. I got the first aid kit. I can help you. I can help you to take that low self-esteem and I can show you how it is to be humble. I can take your low self-esteem and I can make you the man of God that I have called you to be. I can take your low self-esteem and change this world. I can take your low self-esteem and change your mama. But are you going to let me? It's that simple. 
It's a honey dip lie. And the reason is because we pick it up and it sounds so sweet to me. Having that excuse that because I come from the projects and because my daddy was a drug addict and my mama didn't lay nothing down for me, it seemed so sweet until I started to taste of it and it was so bitter. But I thank God that I allowed him to help me spit it out and realize for what it was. So when it comes through again, I know. But, but whenever the uh, the next person, brother, sister, whoever it may be, comes to me, I can sit there and say, you know what? I know what you're going through and I know how it is. But I know how it is to allow God to change that. God to change your mind and God to change not only your mind, but your situation and your circumstances. Now, my brothers, do y'all have anything to add, any encouragement? Well, my people, the coffee's running low, so me and the fellas got to go. We love y'all. Stay encouraged. And remember, it's a honey dip lie.